everyone, my name is Harry Psicodios. I am I am a fifth decanate currently at the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Aeronautics in the University of Patras in Greece under the supervision of Professor Lambert and I'm going to present you the work under the title Efficient Thermomechanical Simulation of the LPGA Process for the Prediction of Residual Stresses and Strains in Parts. This is the presentation outline and to begin with a short description of the LPBA process which is also known as selective laser melting additive manufacturing process that enables the fabrication of parts with complex geometry from a digital model by uh, joining the material in a layer by layer manner. At first a powder a layer is uniformly spread on the substrate by wiper and a mobile laser heat source selectively melts the, the powder uh, in a specific pattern according to the digital model. The powder particles melt and solidify to form a layer of a built bar and the platform moves down uh, by the layer thickness and the process is repeated again and again in a layer by layer manner until the entire part is fabricated. Despite its advantages, the LPBF process has some major drawbacks regarding its wide adoption uh, in data, which are the formation of process-induced defects or flows due to improper selection of proper uh, process parameters or instabilities occurring during the process. In the figure two, we have lack of fusion, the well-known lack of fusion defects, which were not resulted from the uh, chosen of process parameters that, that result from um, uh, insufficient uh, energy uh, input but from uh, ideal process conditions that uh, shows the stochastic formation mechanism of these defects sometimes and the development of residual stresses due to the rapid thermal cycles of the process. Both of these drawbacks lead to unreliability of properties and mechanical uh, behavior of the LPBF parts. Regarding the formation mechanism of uh, residual stresses, uh, it has been proposed in the literature uh, the form that a simple model to describe them uh, in the LPBF process. This simple model, uh, the main assumption of this simple model is of a part whose layers are melted instantaneously. At the first step of the model, a layer is added and heated instantaneously uh, and heated above the temperature of the underlying part. Its expansion is restricted, is restricted by the cooler underlying layers and compressed stresses are formed in the layer and the design stresses are formed in the underlying part. Then the layer cools down at the, at the room temperature and contracts at a greater rate than the part are the Tensile and compressive stresses are developed in the new layer in the, and in the underlying part, respectively. Despite its simplicity, this model does not consider the scan strategy, which means that we uh, move toward, towards uh, the simulation of the process. But the simulation of the process with the finite element me method has huge spatial and temporal requirements. Uh, detailed models that uh, consider all the heat transfer phenomena uh, presented in the figure, which is radiation, induction, and convection, uh, are uh, restricted to parts with small dimensions because the, the, L, the finite element size must be very small to capture the non-linear phenomena around the Melbourne region. Thus, enormous computational resources are required. For this reason, uh, in literature, uh, alternative modeling approaches has been proposed for the simulation of the LPPA process for realistic parts. The common feature between these models is the use of approximations or abstractions, so the modeling of individual laser passes is no longer required. In the present thermomechanical modeling approach, which was developed in an ANSI CPDL solver, uh, the main assumption is of the laser of is that the laser beam and the scan strategy are replaced with a uniform heat input on each layer. And the layers are gradually uh, heated and activated to the melting temperature of the material alloy. Uh, this method accounts for the formation or the expansion and shrinkage of each layer 
as a driving mechanism, uh, which, uh, are, which is in agreement with the previous uh, described mechanism. For the laser deposition method, the element birth and death, uh, birth and death technique was utilized, where the entire part is messed at the beginning of the simulation, and all the elements of the part are initially set to status death, which means that they, uh, their uh, contribution on the material properties matrices is an equilibrium. And as the process evolves, the elements of the new layer are become, uh, become alive, which means that they start to contribute to the material matrices. Another approximation of the present method is the use of uh, lumped layers, which means that uh, many thin layers are lumped are uh, merged uh, into a thicker one. This consideration was done because of the, of the if we use each layer, uh, the computational time would be enormous. This would lead to insufficient computational time so of the top of the simulation of the process. Uh, regarding the material properties, the AM material uh, considered as a continuous medium and macroscopic properties were considered. Uh, in detail, uh, to be more specific, temperature dependent material properties were considered due to the wide range of uh, temperatures and physical states that the AM uh, material experienced during the process. And the powder material properties were considered about two orders of magnitude lower to the respective, uh, to, with the respect to the respective of bulk materials. Uh, in the mechanical analysis, temperature dependent yielding behavior was also considered uh, with a bilinear isotropic hardening model. In order to validate the, pres the presented uh, mechanical model, a uh, comparison with the available from the literature uh, experimental data was performed. The experimental test case considered the fabrication of a single candelaber beam, which is a specimen that uh, we evaluate the, uh, the formation of the residual stresses in the parts. And it was fabricated from, uh, by uh, a nickel-based alloy, Ancona 625. And as you can see, uh, as you can see, the uh, geometry of the beam is rather complicated to provoke the uneven uh, stress and strains distribution throughout the part. Uh, the experimental characterization of the residual strains and stresses was conducted with the X-ray diffraction method, which provided data for uh, the variation of X and Z components of strains uh, along three line profiles that expanded throughout the part. As you can see, the line profiles were placed in different heights above the, the substrate to get an insight of the distribution of residual stresses. And this is the finite element model based on the Cartesian measuring strategy. Well, hexahedral elements was were used for the discretization of both the part and the substrate. Only portion of the substrate was modeled to have to limit the computational times and to ensure the proper heat transfer between the part and the substrate contact elements were, were used between them. The element size was 0.4 millimeters, which was an element size that combined the convergence of the model with a dimensional accuracy. And here are the comparison between the experimental and uh, computational results in the three uh, line profiles. The first one is the line profile that's upper the, the model and the last one is at the bottom of the model. Uh, and as you can see, the comparative, the predicted strains uh, have the same trending with experimental results and a nice correlation uh, was achieved for the magnitude of the X components of strains, especially at the thinnest sections of the part. Um, in terms of the Z components of residual strains, uh, although the predicted results uh, follow the trending of experimental measurements, uh, a considerable divergence presented uh, with, uh, concerning the magnitude of, res of the results. And this was attributed mainly to the main assumption of the thermomechanical model, uh, which was the, the uniform heat input 
uh, on the emergency layers. And this is the visual comparison between the experimental and uh, predictive and uh, computational results. Uh, and as you can see, throughout uh, at the middle section, uh, at the middle area cross section, at the middle cross section area, excuse me, of the part. And as you can see, a strong agreement was achieved for both training and the magnitude in most occasions of the, uh, of the strain distributions throughout the part. And regarding the computational time uh, for at the element size of 0 0.4, uh, the total computational time was less than an hour. If we decrease the element size in a linear fashion, the computational time increases at an exponential, an exponential uh, function, which means that we should be very careful regarding the, ch the choice of the element size uh, in order to lower the computation time of the model. And these are the conclusions and recommendations for future research for, which are undergoing. The residual stresses are a major drawback of the SLM process and reliable models are needed to estimate uh, the, the distribution throughout the AM parts. Uh, the thermomechanical simulation uh, for the prediction of residual stresses in part scale requires a series of assumptions and in the present one uh, a uniform heat uh, input was uh, on each layer is up, uh, was used and the experimental validation or an experimental validation of the, the presented thermomechanical model, model was performed and presented a good correlation with experimental ones, especially for the trending, but uh, for the uh, but a considerable di divergence at the Z components of strains uh, was observed. And the, for this reason, the modeling approaches that consider the laser beam direction and laser scan strategy in an efficient uh, model framework should be developed and they are currently under work. And despite that, the present thermomechanical model can be used in a, a general framework for the assessment of structural integrity of the LPBM parts. This, uh, this is the representative literature. And thank you for your attention. Thank you so much.